I'm going to be taking a quick look at the UEV CPE 852 wireless bridge. UEV contacted me a short while ago to review their wireless bridge and I thought I'd take a quick look at it and see what it's capable of doing. A wireless bridge is useful if you need to get Wi-Fi uh, in an external location uh, that's a decent amount of distance away from your home or your office or where, wherever you are located. And you don't really, it's not feasible to either run a cable or you don't want the, the expense or the work or the hassle to try to actually bury a cable, um, like a fiber optic cable, for example, over a long distance. This device is supposed to go up to five kilometers, but that's like theoretical. I don't really have a way to test super far away, but I'll, I'll try to take it a little further away and see what, what this can do. Um, so what we're gonna do now, first of all, we're gonna do an unboxing of this uh, device and see what we get in it. In this cardboard box, you're gonna get a instruction manual, of course, right? And you'll get two of these boxes, which are the wireless bridge um, boxes. This is, it says it's capable of up to 300 megabits at 2.4 gigahertz and up to 900 megabits at not, uh, 5 gigahertz. So we'll see how close that gets when we're in close range because it's only going to get worse, you know, the farther away we go. So we'll see what that's capable of doing. So I'll put these over there. And it's going to come with two um, power boxes here. These little power adapters are actually poe these boxes actually do 24 volt passive poe which is kind of like unif some of the uh, older unify wireless access points i kind of wish just out of the box i wish just looking at the specs that i wish these came with 48 volt you know poe just so you can power it from your poe switch so you won't be able to power it from your poe switch unless possibly you might be able to from a unify switch that supports passive uh, poe you might be able to do that I don't have a Unify switch to test that with, so that's something that um, that you may be able to do. Let's see how you have, um, you put um, data in one and the power in the other, so that way you can get data and power to your wireless bridge. Looks like we get um, two ethernet cables, it looks like. So these are actually Cat6 uh, one meter cables that it looks like they are shielded. That's uh, kind of nice if you want shielded cables. Uh, it also comes with these uh, metal rings that you can uh, tighten it to a pole. Uh, it doesn't come with a pole, but I think you can buy one as an accessory. But if you already have a pole that's outside, you should be able to you know, hook this up to the back here and just tighten it on. So you just hang it up there. So that was the quick unboxing. So now we're going to plug these in and we'll see what, so we see what these devices are capable of doing. Okay, so I'm going to run an iPerf 3 test to test out the performance of this wireless bridge. I have these devices about 10 feet apart, and as you can see, I can get about 400 megabits. It seems to be about the top speed, about 10 feet away. That's pretty good considering that the maximum throughput is rated at 900 megabits, and usually with wireless, you don't get close to the theoretical max, and that's actually not much lower than I get with some of my Wi-Fi 5 devices that I have on my network. It's actually a pretty decent performance. Like it's actually better than I expected. Okay, some some notes on the uh, build quality. I noticed it feels like really lightweight, like it's like a cheaper, not super heavy, thick plastic. Um, so hopefully this would hold up when it's outdoors. I don't know unless I try it over an extended period of time. Some of the other YouTube channels that reviewed other UEV products uh, mentioned that the seams and stuff didn't really line up and stuff in the plastic, but it seems like these actually do kind of line up pretty well. Um, one thing I noticed when you first open these tabs, uh, it's actually kind of loud. Almost sounds like it's going to crack. You hear that? It sounds like it's going to break. Um, and when you put it back on, it kind of doesn't feel like it stays on very good um, on the bottom. So you see how it's just like I can just pull it right off. Um, unless you get it kind of snapped in there a little bit. I think I, think I got it snapped in there. Nope. It just kind of pulls right off. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I'm kind of playing with that a little bit. So maybe if I, there, you have to push that tab kind of back up there a little bit so that actually stays in place. You don't want that to fall off, you know, when, if it's outside. So that's kind of interesting. So I notice if I do this a few times, sometimes it it will crack and sometimes it won't, like that did it again. I'm going to demonstrate how to connect these devices together. I actually found out there's two different ways after playing around with this for a little bit. I wasn't paying attention to the labels in the back of this. I'll show you uh, real quick on the bottom, there's a, some labels here. And it actually says this is a, a one gigabit and this is actually 100 megabits. So if you're, when I first tr tried this out, I plugged um, the POE in one side and the data into in the other 
for the LAN connection. And I was getting like slow speeds, and I was like, I thought this was gigabit. I was getting 100 megabits. <laughs> so um, that's an important thing to consider. Part of the things they market this for is uh, if you want to hook up a security camera outdoors and it's a far away, you can actually connect it to the 100 megabit port, which is perfectly fine for most security cameras, even 4K cameras. Because of that, what we're going to do, uh, the first way I want to show you what the, I recommend you hook it up if you want the full gigabit um, up to a gigabit speed, you're not going to get that on the wireless, but you want to be able to get past 100 megabits. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take one of these cables that came with the device here. And we're going to take the PoE plug, and there's one, this left side here says PoE, the right side says LAN. So we plug the PoE um, into this, and we'll plug that into where it says LAN slash PoE, and we want that to be the hundred the gigabit port, right? So you have these two connected together, and this will be the device that we're connecting. I'm, for example, I have this hooked to my mini PC in my server closet, so I want to hook that device to here. So this will get you a full gigabit uh, of theory, right, speeds. And so that's the fastest way to connect it. Now, if you are connecting a camera or something on the other end, you don't need the fast interface. You can just simply plug it into this other, this other uh, port, this other ethernet port. So for the most part, if you just want a faster point to point connection, just want to make sure you connect it to this PoE adapter. So basically, you'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, there is a little switch. I don't know if you can see it right there. Yeah, I turn the camera. There's a little switch here that has A and B on it. A means it's the master device, and B means it's the slave device. And so, and there's also the channel numbers on there as well. Those are automatically uh, calibrated the same when you buy them, but you can, you can change it to something different. By default, these devices work as a wireless bridge, but they also have a wireless access point enabled, which I didn't realize until I um, started looking into it a little further. So the master device has the wireless access point um, broadcasting by default. So you want to put the, the wireless access point master one at the far end if you want a wireless network on that side of, of your bridge. And then you'll keep the slave device on your um, local network near your main, your main network switch. So if you want to use the Wi-Fi capability, you could do that. If not, you can turn off the Wi-Fi capability and just use it purely as a bridge uh, to, to shoot your network a little farther um, than Wi-Fi will go. I hope this helps you show how simple it is to connect together. It's just kind of like basically like hooking up any wireless access point, except you have two of these, and they need to be uh, facing each other pretty directly line of sight is the ideal way to, to point these things since they're designed to be point to point. The CP852 has a web interface. I noticed the IP address is 192.168.255.108. I noticed that this interface only has HTTP access and not HTTPS. So if you have this on your network, you might want to either isolate it somewhere or put it on a proxy if you're worried about having an encrypted connection to it. One thing to note is I actually had to change my IP address on my machine manually to be on the 192.168.255 network because even though I enable firewall rules to this network, it still didn't let me in. So I'm kind of wondering if there's a firewall built into this device that only allows you to be on this specific network. It says it in the instruction manuals, but you can change the settings for this device. So you can put it on whatever network you want. So you can isolate it however you see fit for your network to be more secure. As you can see on the web interface here, you have some CPU memory load and some uptime statistics statistics here. And then you got some wireless uh, information here that you can uh, click on some of the settings. So as you can see here, you could uh, down here, you can see what mode it is, A master, B slave. Um, this device has a switch on it, as I showed you earlier. So this one's actually master, you can't change it. It's just informational to show you this is the master device so you know what you're on. If you click on network map, you can see your client lists and you can see if you're connected to the internet or not. I don't have this device connect, connected to the internet yet. So if, if you notice, so you click on here, this one's called Ping Dog, which I thought that was kind of a funny name. So when you look at it, it's some sort of watchdog. 
so it's, it calls it a ping watchdog so they call it a ping dog <laughs> never heard of that before but that's kind of interesting but this what it sounds like though from the description is it says your ssid will not show in site surveys but actually it sounds like you're just hiding your ssid so i'm not sure why they call it a ping watchdog so that's kind of confusing that terminology but it just seems like you're just turning off uh, broadcasting your ssid which a lot of access points offer that functionality so as in the advanced settings you you can see all your 2.4 gigahertz and your five gigahertz wireless network settings. So you can change some of these uh, values down here and your password. In the LAN settings, you can actually change the IP address of your wireless access point. You can see how it's manually configured to be on .108. So you could actually come in here and either set the automatic IP and you can manage your IP address in like OpenSense, for example. Um, or you can manually set it as a static IP in whatever network you see fit. There's also some IPTV settings, which I mentioned earlier. This is like enabled by default, which is great if you have IPTV type stuff on your network. You might want that traffic to go across your network. Some information about the built-in switch that's on the, on the device itself. You can see some of those settings. And it even has wake on LAN capability, so you can wake up a device that's connected to this bridge, which is kind of interesting. It has that ability. Okay, for the administration page, you can see that you can uh, change your login information, which is I recommend you do because you have a username and password is admin admin by default. So you want to change that and you can change your, some of your time zones and NTP servers, which is a good idea. You can even, you can even uh, add a remote log server, which you want if you want to log some different things here, which is um, great if you want to do some network monitoring. Uh, there's some services that are up here. You can actually change the port that, that this runs on. Operation mode is interesting. You can change it from access point mode to wireless router mode. It's interesting that it says this is the default mode, but I didn't change any settings on this, and it's actually an access point mode by default. Which this is probably the mode you'd want it in, because this is if you're connecting uh, directly to the internet. So that that's most likely what you don't want to do. So it's kind of funny the default mode is the mode you probably don't want to use, but it luckily it's defaulted to the mode you do want to use, even though it's technically not the, the actual default. <laughs> so that's kind of funny to me. And if you need to do some firmware updates, you, you can go in here to get the firmware updates. And then, um, and then there's some settings here that you can, you know, factor defaults and that kind of thing. You can reset it back to when you first, first got it. So, and then there's some console access here you can do. It says it's an emulator for some commands. If you want to run some commands on here to like Linux commands or whatever, to do some whatever troubleshooting, you can do that as well in here. Then you can go to customization for your button, LEDs and stuff. You can, um, you know, if you want to enable, disable some of this stuff on, on the front. So if you don't want it, maybe as many blinking lights or something, maybe you can customize some of those. One thing I thought was kind of interesting is there's this option here for scripts. You can run scripts before the router's initiated or initialized, I mean, and after the router started. I'm actually not quite sure what you'd use this for, but maybe it, you could do some interesting things with this, uh, some simple little checks or different things on this bridge. Um, there's also an internet detector um, page, so you can put some uh, IP address in here so it knows if you're connected to the internet or not. Uh, you can change what these values are. Uh, there's some other things here that might be interesting, some in, uh, information about the different speeds and modes and stuff of uh, your different wireless networks and some of your wired connections on the devices themselves. And then you find like, a system log page where you can actually look in here and see what's happening. You can see when you scroll to the top here, you actually see it's running a lightweight Linux operating system with you know BusyBox. I hope that gives you a general idea of what you can see. It's a real basic interface and there's some things you can change in here. The, the biggest things you might want to change is the LAN connection here. IP address, you want to change that to be on the network you want. And then you also want to change your administrator password because by default it's admin admin. I hope you found this information about the UEV CPE A52 to be helpful in determining if you wish to purchase something like this for your home network to extend out a little farther from uh, than Wi-Fi will reach. And I have affiliate links below if you decide you wish to purchase uh, something like this for your home network. And until next time, I will see you later.